All right, so in this video, I'll walk you through how to download the full PDF of research articles using Python. And we're gonna to stick to publisher APIs, publisher websites, and open access article databases. And we're going to avoid using any legally gray sites that might contain copyrighted materials. Now, the good news is that it's relatively easy to get set up. The bad news is that it's not going to work for every publisher or every article. So we'll go over at the end why that is and why that needs to change. But for now, let me just show you how to get this set up and running. Now, step one is to make sure that you have legal access to the journal and to be on your institutional network or on VPN so that you have your subscription access activated. Step two is to install the repo full text article downloader, which is what I wrote for getting PDFs of the articles. You can install the script in one line using the command below, uh, and you can also go online and see the instructions for the installation. Step three is to follow the instructions online to configure the script by collecting API keys for the various publishers. So the API keys are provided by some publishers to facilitate the text and data mining, but not all publishers support or provide them, which is why the script is not gonna work for every single publisher. Now, step four is to run the script for your desired articles. And the script can be run either with a command line or with Python. With a command line, you can get an article for any single DOI. And if you want, you could write like another script that uses that command line script to get the, the, the information for multiple DOIs. With Python, you can get the article PDF for a single DOI, or there's also a function to bulk get the DOIs for multiple articles. So the documentation for all the options is in the readme file in the repo itself that you can see online. And by the way, if you're trying to figure out how to get the DOIs in the first place for the articles that you might be interested in and do this in a programmatic way with programmatic search and filter, you can see my previous video on literature mining with Python and the bibliometrics library. Now, step five is to be disappointed that more publishers don't support text and data mining. In fact, most publishers either make it difficult or impossible to do text mining. In many cases, the publisher wants to negotiate a separate paid agreement to perform text and data mining. Now, there do seem to be some publishers that are pro text and data mining, like the Public Library of Science or PULAS, which publishes the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, for example. However, these efforts seem fairly uncoordinated. So, for example, PLOS has all these statements on their website that say they support text mining, which is great. And they even publish something called the Hague Declaration, which sounds like a coordinated effort to get this working for multiple publishers. But when you actually click the Hague Declaration, it brings me to this like weird WordPress website with ads for high voltage detox shampoo and like all these other crazy things. So it doesn't seem like a real thing. So that really brings me to the discussion, which is why don't more publishers make it easy for researchers to do text and data mining? I mean, obviously it's because one, they're afraid that the licensing agreements will be broken and their intellectual property is going to be stolen. And second, they want the ability to charge more for what they feel is like a premium service. But honestly, I'm not sure that this is going to work for them long-term. The fact is there already exists these legally gray websites that researchers are using for their text and data mining purposes. And unfortunately, it's actually easier to get the articles using those sites than it is to work with the publishers and get the articles legally. One of the reasons I wrote the full text article downloader package was to make it easier to get the articles directly from the publishers. But at the end of the day, it's only a partial solution. And you know, I grew up in the era of like Napster and BitTorrent, and this whole thing just reminds me of the period of time when everybody was stealing music through Napster or BitTorrent, and it was both cheaper and easier to get music illegally than it was to get it legally. And so people just ended up breaking the law. So when iTunes came around and started selling music, they made it much easier to get the music than Napster and BitTorrent. You didn't have to wait around for your torrent to finish. You didn't sometimes get random files. And the price that iTunes charged was a dollar per song, which people found to be pretty reasonable and you know, worth the convenience and to be legal. So you know, the publisher should probably take a page from Apple's book and just figure out how to make it really easy and convenient and affordable to do the right thing. So in the meantime, like what can you do as a researcher? I would say the number one thing is to publish your work on Archive, Chem Archive, or another preprint server before you submit to a journal. And this will just make sure that you and everyone else will always have access to the information in that article. And all these servers will work with text and data mining. So see my other video if you're interested in how to publish on Chem Archive, for example. And if you have a choice, you can always decide to prefer to publish your work eventually with a publisher that lets you do text and data mining.
And if you are interested in which publishers uh, actually allow text and data mining and what their policies are, I've linked down to a couple of guides uh, that try to summarize the state of affairs, although the policies are always changing. So with that, happy article collecting and see you in the next video.